Welcome back to Culture Cast, episode seven. Back with Dom again. Uh, been a little bit, but we're back. Uh, not too much going on in the league currently. Uh, we wanted to cover Marshawn Bochamp. Uh, recently dropped 83 points in the crossover league. Pretty crazy. Say whatever you want about pro am stuff. Uh, seeing something like that is still pretty crazy. Still pretty cool. Um, and, you know, Marshawn Bochamp is someone I think a lot of teams, you know, there's a little bit of a little bit of wonder there, you know, playing with the Bucks. What do you learn from Giannis? What he's learned from Drew Holiday and all these guys, you know, drafted. He was their only first round pick. So um, a, a couple of years ago, it's going to be interesting to see if like this is, you know, it's just a pro-am thing. Who cares? Or if, you know, Marshawn is really kind of, you know, going to be taking a step from Milwaukee, because if so, that's huge for them. Um after that, we got AD, all right, a week after Jalen Brown signs the biggest contract in NBA history at $304 million, AD says, hold my beer, sir. I'm going to sign the richest annual contract mm-hmm. in NBA history at three years, $186 million, which is $62 million per year, richest in history. So uh, that's pretty crazy. We'll be talking about that. Um, and then afterwards... Uh, to close out the video, but this is going to be the biggest portion of the video, are the remaining free agents. Um, I, there's quite a few, and I think a lot of teams, you know, could be using a lot of these guys. So we've picked about, uh, you know, a little less than 15, I think. I, I didn't count, but I think it's around 15, maybe a little bit more. Uh, we'll be talking about them and uh, just, you know, let, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what teams could use them, where these guys fit in the league and, and so on and so forth. Um, but that's that's going to be that. Uh, let's get right into it with Marshawn Bochamp. Uh, I saw the highlights. They're pretty crazy. What do you think about it, man? man? Two things. It puts into perspective just how good NBA players are skill wise, head and shoulders above every other league and just anyone. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean, not to say he's not a great player. He's still a younger player, but it shows you, you before that, you probably would never think someone like that would drop 83 points just regularly like that. But he looks so effortless. And to yeah. think someone that's on the end of a bench in the NBA, yet he's on a contender, but it's still crazy to think someone at the end of a bench can drop 80, 83 pretty, pretty easily without any effort. <laughs> but yeah. And not against like, you know, not just like, little, yeah, not, it's a pro am, but it's not like it's just, random dudes at the ymca you know no these are like college dudes like high school recruits overseas guys like these are still names technically he's not like playing the dude that works at t-mobile you know (laughs) so he's playing some you know relatively legit guys and yeah it's you know we always see the memes especially when it comes to the wmba of guys you know the misogynists and all the dudes who are like you know there are eighth graders that'll beat them it's like (laughs) <laughs> here's this dude dropping <laughs> off college talent uh with that, ease yeah. like without breaking a sweat you know <laughs> um anytime you think you're better than an nba player just remember the sure. worst guy in the league is it's 50 times so better than you yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh it, it was pretty crazy man he's such a talented player um yeah. it, it, i don't know why he, he reminds me so much of kevin porter jr in just you know terms of being a you know kind of a lanky awkward build yeah uh, so it, you know i really hope he does well it was really cool to see um if you guys haven't seen i recommend going and watching the highlights just you know anytime someone drops a, a game like that you know like when devin booker dropped 70 against Boston, you gotta check it out you know yeah. so uh go give that a watch but Pretty crazy, good scoring, just fun. A um, lot of a lot of pro am stuff going on in general. So you know, you try to keep up with that. It's fun. It's you know, it's a good time. Um, next, we're a little bit of a short intro, short start, you know. But uh, next, AD. All right, Anthony Davis with the LA Lakers signs a record extension, three years, hundred eighty six million, the richest annual extension in NBA history. Um, 62 million a year. Look, you know, since 2020, 2021, I know he had a solid resurgence this year, still a lot to be desired. Um, the health is still a huge risk and a huge concern. Um, it's been a few years since I think Anthony Davis has been worth anything regard like resolving or revolving around this level of money. 
Um, do you think it's worth it? What is your, what's your view about this? Okay. So Jalen Brown screwed over the market. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a known fact now that Jalen Brown might've messed up the market a little bit. I definitely think Anthony Davis is a better player than Jalen Brown. Agreed. And I understand that. Do I think the contract is feasible? I mean, I think he's a great player no matter what. And I understand the injury issues are there. I think he might be used maybe in the next year or two as trade bait. I don't really understand. I think you had to extend him because I think Braun's gone no matter what after next year. So I think maybe resigning someone like that, showing that there's still appeal in LA to come play with the Lakers. You have Anthony Davis still there. Mm -hmm. So I understand the perspective of them giving him that, but at the same time, it is a lot of money for a guy. You might, you luckily might get 50 to 60 games out of that's a lucky it's a lucky year to get 50 to 60. Cause I don't think we'll ever see 82 at Anthony Davis again. Yeah. And I think 50 and 60 is at this point, a little bit generous too. It's like, the, you know, the production's there though. I'm not hating on the production. Oh, yeah. He's a very productive player when he plays, he is a beast when he plays. It's just, when does he play? And if he does yeah. play, hey, great for him. I love watching Anthony Davis play dude's a beast. It's just, yeah. I think the big yeah. thing has been that like his defense has stayed. That hasn't changed oh, yeah. injuries or not. He's been no. a good defender. It's just been the offense, which has taken such a step back. A lot um, of jump shots settles a lot. Yeah. Um, not- the motor just doesn't seem to be there. Not like, what it was. Yeah. Um, and that's what ultimately bothers me. I mean, Jalen Brown's got the motor. Jalen oh, Brown's yeah. not as good, but he's got the motor. I don't think anybody will ever question. Does Jalen oh, Brown yeah. want it? He wants um, it. I question if Anthony Davis wants it. And that's the thing is like, he wants the money, but when I watch him play, even his great games, it's like, it just, he's not really engaged. It's kind of just like, if he's fed the ball, he's good enough to score. Yeah. Um, but he's not aggressive. That's why, you know, the meme about like, he's up, he's down, he's up, he, you know, it's just like, cause he has a 30, 10 and five game with yeah. three blocks. And then he has a, 10 6 in one game. I know. He has a 25 10 and 5, you know, it's like he he just can't continue to play consistently and yeah. You know, in all fairness, you know, it's it's no it's no secret that the Lakers are a pretty dysfunctional team. Oh, They've always been. They, yeah. It's always a revolving door, so you know, I can't oh. imagine mentally Anthony Davis is in a better spot than he probably was in New Orleans, but yeah. um, I I just it's like you said, it's just, it's so much fucking money. It's so much money. <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> like we talked yeah. about Jokic, Steph, Luca, and Giannis are probably the only guys worth Giannis or uh, Jalen Brown's contract. Yeah. They're probably the only ones worth That's- 62 million a year as well. It, it's just, it's ridiculous to give, you know, Anthony Davis at this point is maybe a top 10 player. I yeah, like maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, to me, yeah. he's like 11, 11, 12. I think there are still better players that I'd rather have over him because yeah. the motor is such a problem for me. Yeah. I mean, um, ability is the best ability. I mean, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I, I just like you, you were mentioning earlier about, you know, Jalen Brown messing up the market. Like, what yeah. do you even how do you even think we go from here? If Anthony Davis just made this money, like what do you see the market looking like I mean, next year? I, I've I've been reading stuff that SGA is gonna probably be expecting a four hundred million dollar extension and stuff like that. And it's like, man, <laughs> this the the salary cap, I just don't know how it's gonna I don't know how like not obtainable, but how realistic this market can stay this way. But I mean, I I don't really know what you can even do. I mean, the market goes up every year, but this year it seems like it just got up like a a good amount, like a really like a 20, like a 2015 to 2016 type market where it just shot. And it's like, I don't don't know. I don't think it goes down. Like it's, it just keeps going up. I guess I really don't know. This is a weird, this is a weird NBA is in free agency wise and such. Cause this is, this is big money for two guys that I'm not disrespecting either. They're both great players in their own right. It's just 100%. They're, not, they're not top five players, top seven players even. So yeah. getting money that I just to, like, what would someone like Luca want? Like exactly. Like he's the one that should be asking for, for something. Five like years? This. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what's going on? So I, as of right now, it's just, I'm, I'm looking, I'm on the lookout for what the, 
the real the realistic top five guys are wanting because as of right now this is a this is a crazy market right now for signing some guys like that that's it's a bit extreme yeah i don't know if you follow uh soccer football like i sort of have tried to get into premier league i, I follow aston villa uh it's been three years i was watching when jack Grealish was there so i'm not a bandwagon uh <laughs> uh but you know Kylian Mbappe, one of the best players in the oh, world, yeah. was offered a billion dollar contract <laughs> by the Saudi Arabia team. Yeah. You know, football is the world's sport. Oh, yeah. You know, so yeah. that's understandable. It's like that is the world's sport. like this is just we're talking about a U.S. sport where US guys sport. are asking for, in a salary capped league yeah. asking <laughs> for like four, like 300, yeah. 400, 500. It's ridiculous. It's like. Again, I don't know, like, I don't see, unless the owners just put the kibosh on the whole thing, I do not see the numbers going down. And it's like, what do you do? Because the way I look at it, it's like in football, and not in soccer, but in American football, there's a hard cap. Yeah. So it's like, if someone on the team asks for this exorbitant deal and a team goes through with it, you better hope you don't have any flaws elsewhere because it's going to be really hard to really level out and balance the team. Um, like that's why, you know, I respect Patrick Mahomes so much. Cause he, like, if you just look bare bones at the deal that he signed a few years back, you're like, yeah. holy shit, that's a lot of money. He's yeah. like, they structured it so well so that it's not paying too much per year. Yeah. So that it's like, it's a manageable contract. Geno Smith signed a very manageable three-year contract. He probably could have gotten way more from another team, but he settled and, and helped the team kind of get in a spot where you can go out and sign free agents. Quandre Diggs restructured his contract so that you could sign more guys. You know, you were just saying that Shea is going to be like, like wants a 400. It's like, how do you expect to compete if you're making all the money? I just, that, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, And again, it's like, we're, we may be getting to a point where there becomes a hard cap and the whole luxury tax system goes away. And it's like, no, we can't keep doing this because it's like the more and more like, players don't even have to hold up their end of the bargain anymore. Like we saw Ben Simmons sign the contract and then say, I want out. (laughs) What, like, what does a team do? I'm not one to side with billionaires much, but it's like in situations like these, I mean, dude, you're holding a fan base hostage, a team hostage. Like forget the, forget the guy paying you. The people who watch this sport are suffering because of it. So, you know, I, I really, it really bothers me that we're at a spot like this. Cause I think at some point in the near future, it's going to get really bad for the players again and like really bad. So um, congrats, Anthony Davis and congrats, Jalen Brown, but you have royally fucked the league. <laughs> Enjoy your money, you know, but um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it, it's pretty, it's pretty ridiculous where we're at, but uh, I guess moving on from there, we could get right into the free agents because this is going to be the bulk of the video. Um, so we're going to go and name off, you know, we have quite a few free agents in general, but we have per position it's about three to five. So we'll start with the centers. Uh, Dominic and I came out, came out, uh, Dominic and I came uh, together to figure out kind of the best options for teams overall. And for the centers, we wanted to start with Bismack Biombo. Uh yeah. Bismack, fantastic backup big in this league. His years with Toronto is where he kind of got paid because he had a good, a really good uh season for them. Yeah. Uh, or a playoff run, I think. But playoff run, yeah. He, he's been a very quality backup in this league for a while. He had his uh, years with Charlotte where he looked really solid. Um recently with Phoenix. So he's someone I think a lot of teams are gonna eye. Uh what are you thinking with Bismack? I mean, I'm very surprised the Suns haven't tried to bring him back. I I think he was great for them last year when Aiden was out, and I'm I'm honestly really shocked. He's a great protects the rim very well for a backup center. He does everything you want. He's really grit and grind. He does everything you need out of a center. So I I'm kind of surprised he hasn't been hit up this offseason because I'm I there's a lot of teams I think that could personally use him a lot. I know he's a bit undersized, but even though he's still a great productive center. What is he like six eight six nine? Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, and he's still and he's still pretty athletic too. Is, I don't think his body yeah. is like that only, worn down. Only thirty one too. He's not that old. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, 
I'm kind of confused. Last year, he averaged – his averages aren't anything to be desired over, but, I mean, he averaged four, 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 and how many minutes? 14 minutes. So, yeah. And Phoenix ran, I think – didn't they run a three line of eight and Landale and him? So, it was, you know, the minutes were very split yeah. up, but – Bismack is someone who's played like 20 minutes a game and can handle it very well. So yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think there's a lot of teams that should be, you know, that should really be paying attention to him. Um, yeah. I'm surprised. Just a quality dude. Yeah. Uh, next we got Derek favors. Uh, yeah. Derek favors has been an interesting player. He's been in the league for quite a while now. Um, I think, wasn't he in the tw- 2009 draft class or 2010? Um He's been uh, old, or maybe older, been, actually. It might have been 2010, because was he picked two? He was picked second, right, or something? He's picked really I high. Think so, yeah, I think so. Um, out, of Georgia, out of Georgia State, I remember that. He went. He was a – Georgia Tech, I'm sorry, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech. Out of Georgia Tech. Yeah, Derek Favors is, has been an interesting player, but it's because of the injuries. He's had so many injuries, and – he never really developed into the, you know, the the superstar that he was projected to be. Yeah. Um, but he's a great, he's kind of in like, you know, someone else on this list we'll talk about is Joe Michael Green. He's just a good offensive rebounder, uh, just yeah, a, a rebounder in general. Yeah. Um, and he seems to be a quality vet. You know, you only ever hear good things about Derek Favors. Uh, it's just being a good leader and a good teammate. And, you know, when we're talking about backups, like in general, regardless of position, that's what you want. Yeah. You don't want problem guys on your bench. That's the worst thing you can have. So, um, you know, Derek favors, he's not gonna, I don't even think he's on the level of Biombo, uh, in terms of like, you know, everything that he can do. Um, yeah. But, but I do think Derek favors has a lot of value. What do you think with him? Yeah, I like him. He's a great rebounder. He does his job. He's a very solid screen setter also. So yes. Interesting in that role. Uh, I mean, I, it's another guy I'm kind of surprised no one was taking a chance on. He's, just another bench bench piece to add i had nothing yeah. too crazy needed out of him maybe 10 minutes but it's someone i think that will get picked up before the start of the season he's he's always been a really solid teammate always a solid rebounder so i, I think he'll definitely have some utility in this league and he played with the thunder i think the last couple of years right yeah he, he was on there and then they uh man where did they, they traded him back to the jazz okay yeah yeah so. also undersized um but there, it's, yeah. He is also, you know, yeah in this league an undersized big who cares you know <laughs> pretty, pretty common. yeah pretty common. yeah 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 and then the third and final center we had is tristan thompson mm-hmm. um tristan thompson looked okay with the bulls um i think the bulls are just kind of a, a mess at the moment we were talking yeah. about them they're really in a tough spot just trying to figure out where to go um they seem to be leaning one direction but you know it always it always ends up being different come the trade deadline so uh you know we'll see then but Tristan Thompson ended up, I think, getting traded or bought out and went to LA. I think it was bought out. Um, yeah, I think and, he did. yeah. And he played really, really quality minutes for the Lakers. Um, you know, I, I think Tristan Thompson over the last few years has genuinely just accepted his spot on his uh, on teams. You know, yeah. he, he's accepted his role. He knows I, I look, I'm not gonna get 25. I'm not the starter. I'm gonna be coming off the bench playing minimal minutes, you know. And I think he's taken that and ran with it. And that's awesome. Uh, so much finals experience um, playing against the Warriors, obviously, uh, you know, with LeBron and, and the Cavs. Good rebound, another good rebounder, good screen setter, and just a high IQ player. Um, someone I think a lot of teams would like on their bench. Um, what do you think about Tristan? Yeah, same thing. I, I knew, I remember on the Kings, they all praised him for being a good leader. Yeah. He showed great leadership on the Kings, I believe, two years ago now. Uh, yeah, he's just, he's a solid bench. He's a vet. He's a great rebounder. Like you said, he has a pretty high motor too, from what I, yeah. what I've always seen. He's always been a really, uh, not productive, but a very, um, very high motor, very good hustler. He, he's mm-hmm. just, he's not, he's always a great, that's a great thing to have for your other players to see. So leading yeah. by example is a great thing. So I, I think, yeah, he definitely has a place. So I, I, I wouldn't be really surprised either. Yeah. I, I think there are a lot of, if you're a young team, especially like, and you're, you know, if you're, I don't, not maybe not Detroit because they kind of have a long jam of centers, but if you're a young team, you know, and you're kind of in a spot where it's like, okay, we want to start competing. I think it's, it behooves you to get a guy who's got finals experience like that. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, I think it really is worth it regardless of like, again, we were talking about beforehand, you know, 
there are a lot of guys on this list where I could see him being more of like in a Udonis Haslam role. And exactly. that's still perfectly fine. That's like that, that they, that still offers a lot for teams. So I think he's one of those dudes where I could even see him not playing, but just being a guy on the bench that, you know, can coach the young guys and provide some, provide another perspective on things, which is very important. Very good. Um, moving on to power forwards. Um, you were saying beforehand, kind of combining Jamichael Green and Blake Griffin, which I think is, uh, you know, worth it to do. Sort of different spots uh, in their careers. Obviously, Blake Griffin has kind of become more of just a, like a utility toolsy kind of guy. Um, Jamichael Green, still a good screen setter, great offensive rebounder. Uh, second half of the season for the Warriors last year, got the shot back, uh, had a good uh, playoff series against the Lakers. Yeah. Um, just a, a solid four, you know. Uh, what do you think about them? What do you think about, you know, kind of the market for them? You you know, I think a lot of these guys maybe have a higher market, but, uh, you know, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like you mentioned, Michael Green showed a lot against the Lakers. I believe was it game five that he had the very good game or was it game? Two? I think it was game two. Game two. Game one and two they, where they were they went they small. started them, right, at the five? Yeah. Yes, and he stretched out the floor very well. Mm-hmm. We all know he can shoot the ball at times, and he's a very solid. I don't know. I don't like him at the five personally. I like him more than yeah. four. Great. That's just the Warriors. Yeah, they they yeah, like they like going small. Yeah. That's just how they do it. No, yeah. But no, he's he's honestly he's a great stretch. I've always been fond of him when he was back in Memphis. I always love how he played. Very yeah. high motor. Plays with a lot of heart. I've always been fond of him. I know Denver was a few years where he was a bit questionable at times, but mm-hmm. even then he offers a lot. He's also another guy that I would expect to be a very solid bet. I'd yeah. Expect- out of him Blake on the other hand he he's in a very different spot at times but uh he's it's too bad to see what happened to him and just the way his career's gone he obviously turned it around in Detroit he fixed his game he changed it around had a great year but then injuries came back plagued him again but as I've seen he's been a he's been a very interesting guy he does a lot of different stuff now than he used to he's he's kind of like a Swiss army knife in a way yeah it's like not I guess as productive, I, I really don't know how to explain it. I, I, when I watched him on the Celtics, he was kind of a Swiss army, He'd, very solid playmaker could stretch mm-hmm. the floor, would run the floor at times also. And just, he can kind of do everything in a way. I don't know if I would say everything, but he, he's a Swiss army. I would say like a very budget Swiss army knife in a way. Yeah, I totally agree. Like we talk about screen setters, yeah. uh, just rebounders, you know, being able to box out, just doing the little things um, yeah. like we were talking about beforehand, you know, some like the, the risk you run with guys who like so heavily lean on their athleticism. Um, once it leaves, like that was a big issue we saw with Russ is yeah. like the drop off. Once the athleticism started to die down is it's like, okay, now you got to find yourself in this league because what made you go, isn't going to make you go anymore. Same with John wall um, and Blake Griffin. Like you said, his best season, his prime was in Detroit. Like yeah. we all remember him on the Clippers, but his prime was in Detroit. Yeah, uh, that dude was genuinely player. a superstar scorer yeah. um, in his couple of years there before he get uh, hurt again. But since going to uh, since going to Brooklyn, especially that playoff uh, series against the Celtics when the Nets got swept a couple of years ago, his ability to just do it, like you said, do a little bit of everything, do it all, provide a spark off the bench is just a you know a toolsy. Uh, little little things kind of guy teams love that you know because it, it, we, we talked about this with phoenix before they made all their signings in the offseason is like who's gonna do the little stuff there yeah. like you want a guy who's gonna say i will uh and, and blake seems to be that guy right now and, and you know again it's awesome to see taking that initiative as, as someone who you know we see a lot of guys just not right off into, su- into the sunset like this they just they really struggle to you know, to kind yeah. of fade away. And he's like, he, he loves it. He's taking it and, and running with it. So uh, I'm excited there. I really think, I really think he'll make a difference. He'll be a big impact player off the bench for a, a lot of teams. Um, moving on from there, Markeith Morris, you know, the Morris twins have always been quality players in this league. Um, yeah. You know, Marcus Morris, I think Clippers fans at this point hate just because yeah. his scoring <laughs> kind of fell off, but yeah. you know, <laughs> Markeith is sort of like the defensive version of Marcus. He's like yeah. sort of the opposite, but not really um, just a lesser, uh, but more physical kind of guy. Um, obviously had the incident with Nikola Jokic a couple of years ago. And since then, 
I think he's a lot not, of he, yeah, he hasn't been the same. No. Um, but he's still a good he's still a good player. Again, another dude, just a very gritty physical guy that can provide yeah. leadership and just a kind of a bit of an identity for the bench. Okay. Um, what do you think about him? Yeah, like you said, the identity is what I would think of right away. Just a very physical player. He'll get in your face. He'll try to throw yeah. you off. That's interesting to see. Um, a few years ago on the Wizards, I believe 2016, 17, he was one of his better years. He had mm-hmm. a lot of ability to stretch the floor at times. I, yeah. I I think he still can. I know he's definitely not the same player as he was. Uh, I know the Jokic issue, I believe he was paralyzed for a bit even after Jokic. Oh, shit. Yeah, like chucked him to the floor. But yeah. uh, but. <laughs> No, he's a no, he's definitely someone that will definitely bring interest in the league. I think a lot of players could kind of take a role like that at times. I maybe mm. not as physical as he can get. It's like I know sometimes he's yeah. very physical and maybe in a bad way at times, but no, he he's he's been around for a while and I think there's a reason why. He was in Dallas last year, the end of the year, right? To finish it, I believe. When he got he got traded with Kyrie. Was he? Maybe I I think so. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. He was with Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, so no, and I, I think I read something today about how he would be interested in Miami if Dame was there or something like that. It was something interesting. Of, I know he was with Miami a year ago or a year yeah, or two ago, yeah, which is where the Jokic back. thing happened, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think, yeah, I definitely think a lot of teams, I think Miami would probably be the best fit for him. It seems like it seems like a Miami type player. I yeah, no, 100%. Nose player. So no, that's someone I definitely think that has a lot of value in this league, and I think he, he can be. I think he can be a good leader. He seems like someone who will very much stick up for his teammates. So I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. I, I, you know, I like to talk about Draymond a lot for that kind of role, just yeah. the emotional leader. You know, you like yeah. guys like that because, yeah. you know, you can't expect every superstar to have that kind of Michael Jordan toughness. Uh, yeah. It's it's rare. It really is for guys to be like, yeah, this is my team. So you know, you get guys who you could kind of, uh, you know, delegate that role to. And I think Markeith is, you know, one of the best in the league is just being a a physical and tough presence for, for yeah. especially young guys. So, yeah, um, yeah, he's got a lot of value. Uh, we put him last, we put this dude last because there are only a couple guys on this, on this entire list that I think are marquee dudes as far as like, you know, if anyone's going first, just off of pure talent and, you know, place in their career, it's probably going to be them. Uh, and it's Christian Wood. Christian Wood has gone unsigned. You know, there's been a lot of, you know, behind the scenes issues of maturity and, you know, all this coachability stuff with him, obviously an atrocious defender, but it's undeniable that this dude is one of the best scoring centers in the league. He's just yeah. very skilled. Uh, terrible free throw shooter, but he's very skilled. <laughs> um, kind of an expensive player, mid mid level sort of dude. I, I, you know, to me, the sixty to seventy million, you know, target kind of seems like what it what it'll be for him. Uh, obviously, with with uh, was with Dallas this past season, uh, Houston beforehand, got to start in Detroit, uh, but a lot of teams could use a Christian Wood. A lot of teams will take a chance on Christian Wood. Uh, what do you think about him? Where do you see where do you see his market right now? Yeah, so he's a weak rebounder. He's a gross defender. <laughs> he's it's just it, it's not he's not he's not wanting to be in a pick and roll big. So you have to have a certain team that can fit his skill set. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, Luke and him they are just not meant to gel together. That's fine. I know Jason Kidd wasn't a fan of him just because he he wasn't very great on the defensive end. But you are getting someone who could probably give you twenty a night. Mm. He, he can stretch the floor pretty well for you he can create he's he's a very interesting player i like him for his skill set offensively i definitely think someone that has a lot of negatives along with that positive probably will have a lower market and i think that's just how it is i yeah. you're not getting anything else out of him outside of scoring i you're not he's not a playmaker he's not offering anything else aside from scoring mm. yeah i think that probably I know I, I keep seeing the vet, the veteran minimum for him, and I, I don't think yeah, same here. I don't think it will come to that, but it, yeah. it really could. I, I, I'm interested because I, I have been following him for a while since he was in the G League. So I, I am I'm interested to see where he goes. I, I'm I'm a fan of him for how he plays offensively. I, I like watching him play, but there's definitely a lot of negatives along with him. So that's yeah. that's just how it is. I don't really know what else to say about it. 
Yeah, no, it, it's it's weird. And, you know, I, I'll play devil's advocate a little bit. You know, if we look at where he's been his career, I mean, can you really like, do we know if he's a bad defender? Like also fair. That is also like, fair. He's been Dallas, on not a good, he's never been a good paint <laughs> defense team. Yeah. I mean, Maxi Kleba's decent, but he was hurt yeah. last year for most of the yeah. season. Yeah. Um, his time in Houston, they're a yeah. clusterfuck. Yeah. His time in Detroit. They were a clusterfuck, still kind of are, but getting better. Yeah. Um, like, you know, one of the, you know, one of the guys I think Warriors fans wanted was Christian Wood, um, which with Dario Sara, she don't need him anymore. But, um, you know, if you pair him with a good, you know, a, a solid defensive four or a yeah. solid defensive five, does Christian, is Christian Wood serviceable? I think that's the main thing is like, if you're, if you're going to run him at the five, but you don't have quality defense around him. Well, yeah. of course, it's not going to look good, yeah. you know, but like we saw with Maxi Kleba, it's like if you kind of put a, you know, a, a Dwight Powell who may not be great, but is serviceable enough, then you could kind of see a dude shine. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, I'm interested to see if Christian Wood maybe has a gear we haven't seen yet and yeah. someone's going to take a chance. Like you said, to me, it, it's either going to be the veteran minimum or it's going to be that mid-level kind of contract. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I'm definitely interested to see there what you know what'll happen because he's an interesting player and you just yeah. don't see many guys you know doing it like him. So, uh, yeah, very much so. Moving on to the small forwards remaining uh, for free agency, we've talked about him quite a bit. Uh, we've talked about a couple of the uh, other guys on this list a bit. Uh, Rudy Gay, I think, is the number one. You know, just in in terms of. Sort of like Markeith Morris is just, the, or Tristan Thompson more so, is a guy with a plethora of experience, been around this league playing for some great teams, uh, has a lot of playoff experience. You know, Rudy Gay, obviously, with Memphis, uh, San Antonio. Like, he's been on some uh, on some solid teams, uh, and he's a, still a pretty quality player in general. Uh, I don't know if he's going to have much of a role anywhere, uh, yeah. but he's still quality. Uh, what do you think about Rudy? Yeah, he's a great vet. He's been in the league for a while now. He's 37 now. Yeah, 36, 37. He's old. You're kind of crazy to think about. But yeah. Oh yeah, he offers so much. I mean, he's still – I know he, at times he was a stretch four in his most recent better years, I would say. Not not the last two years, but before that, he's a really yeah. solid stretch four. He, he's a, he's still very solid. He can I, – I, I personally wouldn't be too mad if my team were to get out and get him. I'd be happy to have him. Someone you need, you need vets like that, and I think someone that quality of a player in the past probably would be a great vet. Yeah, I, it's also interesting to note that they had him, at least his website has him listed at small forward. Um, like you said, I think we all kind of think of Rudy, and I think he's, for his whole career really, has been a four. Um, maybe he was a three in San Antonio and Memphis, but, I, you know. he was. A, I know he was a three earlier on, but I know the last, yeah. like, five to seven years, he'd probably been a four, I would say. Yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe not much of a note, but something interesting, I guess, just in terms of, you know, well, if you're going to get him at small four, then I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, moving on from there, we got Derek Jones Jr. Uh, everyone knows him for being just a high flyer and a fantastic dunker. Um, yeah. But Derek Jones Jr. has kind of made a name for himself in this league, being a, a solid role player. Yeah. Can defend a bit, can get on the glass because of the, the elite athleticism. And he's just a great transition dude. Yeah. Um, another dude who you know hasn't really had the best uh, the best go of things in this league, but I think he's accepted kind of what his you know what his market is and what he provides. You know, what do you yeah. think about what do you think about him? I mean, yeah, he's an elite cutter. He's a great right. like you mentioned, great transition, very solid defensively, very good on the glass. He's he's really a lot of things you can use. He's he's another guy I think that's very versatile in different ways. I know the jump shot's not there. And I know you're not expecting too much skill out of him in a way, I guess. He's mostly obviously known for his athleticism, which that is some next level athleticism he has. But yeah, no, he's a he's a great role player. I would I would think a lot of teams would be more fond of him. But as of right now, I, I guess he's still unsigned. But I, I think a team will definitely pick him up because no, he, a lot of teams could definitely benefit from having a cutter and someone who's gonna put effort on the defensive end and on the glass. So I think someone someone will definitely end up taking a look at him and maybe picking him up. Yeah, for sure. Just a, he's a good young player. He's not, he's not, what is he like 26? He's still oh, pretty young. He's still relatively young. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the athleticism, it's not like he's 33 where he's on the verge of like losing it. I, I think he's still got quite a few good years left in his body. So, um, yeah, I, I hope to see him on a team going into next season. Yeah. Uh, we got TJ Warren next. TJ Warren is a very intriguing and risky player. Yes. Um, the risk seems better than the – or I would say it's more worth it to try with TJ Warren because he's not going to be expensive. He'll probably be a veteran minimum guy. Um, just because like what he doesn't really have a leg to stand on uh, as far as like, you know, contracts go and it, like, you know, teams are like, really, man, you, we don't even know if your feet work. Okay. You gotta, you gotta prove yourself again. So I think he'll get a shot on the team Um, and he's still a good player. You know, obviously he kind of just exploded in the bubble. Yeah. And signed a big, uh, a relatively big contract with the Pacers, um, but just he got hurt and was like out for like two years. Yeah, um, some pretty odd stuff going on. You know, you just you hate seeing stuff like that. But he ended up either signing or getting traded to Phoenix uh, last year, or no, to uh, he's to Brooklyn. With yeah, he's yeah. a little bit of trade. Yeah, yeah, he went to Brooklyn and then went to Phoenix, and he's been okay. Um, I you know. For, again, it's some of these dudes, man, like Blake Griffin, you know, it's hard to do what Blake Griffin's done in terms of like, hey, you were so injury prone where we don't want you to start. We don't want you to be the player you were before. Like, we need you to be someone else. Yeah. And a lot of guys struggle with accepting that. And I think TJ Warren has done a pretty good job at understanding where he is in his career. Yeah. Um, he's still a solid scorer. You know, yeah. and he's a physical dude. He's, you know, he's a talker. He's not a, he's not quiet. He's not shy. So uh, kind of has some Markeith Morris to him in terms of personality. I'm, I'm interested to see what his market looks like. Uh, just a quality player. Another dude that I, you know, I've seen Warriors fans talk about getting. Uh, what do you think about TJ? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's always been a very intriguing shot creator. He yeah. created shot very easily. He's always been, he actually, wasn't able to shoot when he first came into the league from three. And then mm. over the few years of his career, he's become a very, very solid shooter. I know in the bubble, he shot a very high percentage. And even on Indiana before the bubble and after, I believe he averaged 16 to 18 points for like a mm. three-year stretch. Even the last year on Phoenix, I know he averaged at least 16 on the last year in his Phoenix tenure the first mm. time when he was with, uh, was it been 2017, 18? That might've been one of his, or 2016, 17 or 2017, 18. So All one right. of his last years on Phoenix, he had a very solid year. He He's he's a scorer that is a very underrated score. He can score from all three levels. I, I've, I've always been very fond of him, but the injuries have definitely plagued him severely. And it's very tough to see that, but I, I definitely think he still has to have some value and you're not going to get that many shot creators at this time of the year that can, score that well because i i mean when yeah. he, scored, he could score with the best of them at times like we've seen it but i i i think he will definitely find some intrigue from someone i i like him a lot yeah uh like you said very underrated you know he's yeah. there are a lot of dudes that can't replicate what he can and have the experience in the league that he has so yeah. um yeah his market is interesting i'm, I'm i don't know who will take him but I imagine it'll be a contender. You know, you want that off your bench. Yeah. So uh, moving on from there, one of the other guys we've talked about quite a bit, uh, Lamar Stevens. Lamar Stevens is just just a toolsy guy, you know, yeah. plays hard, defense. He's a good forward, plays up, can defend up, great rebounder, 95th percentile of versatility and rim protection. The dude's great. Um, yeah. You know, he's not – gonna blow your socks off with what he does it's just it's like he's a hooper's hooper if you watch him you know, you know like if you understand you know what he provides yeah big um time. so I, i'm i think a lot of teams should be looking at him he's one of the guy he's one of the only guys on this list i feel like we value a little more than it seems the league does yeah um i because it like he's someone i think <laughs> again i genuinely believe everybody should be trying to get a guy like that um, yeah i agree and so you know, what do you think about, you know, if, or I guess any further thoughts on Lamar that we haven't already given? It's still like surprising. How's he unsigned at this time? Yeah. Of the year, you know, it's, it's a bit really weird to me. I don't know. Maybe there's something behind the scenes, but even then I haven't heard yeah. anything about that, but I, I don't know. He just provides so much defensively that you think so many rosters would be like, yeah, we'll take him. 
I'm surprised Phoenix or someone like that wouldn't call him in a heartbeat, but yeah, there must be something we don't know. Cause I'm, I'm very surprised someone that defensively sound. And like you said, he is, he's very, very smart defensively and he has tools. Mm-hmm. So I, that's someone I think that I, I, that's probably the person on the list that I'm most surprised about, to be honest. Yeah. It's, it's cause he just, uh, you know, you can't have enough wings in this league, enough defensive minded wings. So, yeah. you know, like you said, yeah, obviously he's not a scorer, but it's no, like not, you don't need to have five scores out there or five shooters. It's like if you could surround him with shooters, you better. make up for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, better. So uh, interesting that he hasn't gotten signed. We've already talked a lot about him, so there's not too much more that we haven't said. So yeah, uh, to move on from there, someone we've also talked about a lot, uh, the Christian Wood of this list, our, our second and final marquee guy, uh, Kelly Oubre Jr. Um, yes. He's a very, he's a player. (laughs) He's a player. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to get from Kelly Oubre Jr. at this point. Uh, He has had a lot of iterations of who he is. And I don't know, like what, you know, he really likes to shoot. Yeah. Uh, He's high energy. He hasn't seemed to be the same, you know, athletic, physical presence that he was in Phoenix or in Washington after the meniscus tear. But uh, he's still just, uh, I don't know, he's still a very quality player that could do a lot. And I think he's one of the biggest names on this list. Uh, But I just, I don't know. He wants a lot of money. And I don't know if he's worth it because while you can't get enough 3 and D wings in this league, uh, it, I don't know. I just, I feel like there are guys I'd rather have. Um, what do you think about Ubre? Yeah. I mean, we all know he's not afraid to shoot the ball whatsoever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> definitely not afraid. Yeah. Of. Um, he's got the, the forever green light without actually having <laughs> the forever green light. Yeah. He's willing to shoot. Uh, he's he, offensively, he can be special, but like you mentioned, that meniscus tear really set him back. Cause he has not looked anything like he did that one year in Phoenix. That, yeah. 2019 20 year he yeah, was pre-bubble yeah he was a beast but after that yeah he's kind of really fallen off a bit in that department so i i really don't know what he brings at times because in washington everyone looked at him more as like a like a three and d they're forming him to be like a three and d type player but ever since he's left he's changed like when he went to phoenix everyone's like oh wow maybe this guy can be his own like you look he's, like a potential all star. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. He, he's on like potential, like his own player, basically. And then it, through the years, like you meant that injury really seems to be what kind of set him back. Because when he went to the Warriors, he was abysmal, right? In the beginning of the year. So, I mean, was it like three months or two months when he did It's a tough season? system. It, yeah, well, he started off like oh of 20 or whatever. It was it yeah. was a rough beginning, yeah. but yeah, that that to me that really his stint with the Warriors really kind of painted a picture to me because I, like look it's it's no it's no secret that the Warriors system is arguably the toughest to grasp in the league it's yeah. it's a lot of just feel and yeah. um Ubre you'd think Ubre would fit right in with that because yeah. of what, his strengths he did not get it he just didn't he yeah. did not move well I remember so many possessions where he would just not move. And Steph would come in and bring his defender to try to get open and Ubre would just stand there. And so now there's two guys with Steph and you just see Steph like fuck, like physically pissed off because Ubre didn't know what to do. Um, and it, you know, the the IQ is very questionable to me. The energy and the motor there. is yeah, there. It's there. But I don't know if like the IQ is there, uh, to where you know a lot of contending teams would be like, yeah, this is a viable dude that I'm willing to pay. Um, it, it, that kind of thing. It, it bothers me because that's a coach. That's a coaching thing. It's like, if you can't learn that system, like there are G leaguers that come up, man, and they get the warrior system. And you're telling me a, a potential all-star is having a lot of trouble with this. The yeah. Marcus cousins understood this is like, come on, man. Um, that bothers me. Cause that's, that's an IQ thing. And yeah. you know, uh, in Charlotte, we like we were talking about with the summer league stuff, like they have no functionality. That team was just like putting up shots and you know, clock in, clock out. There was no camaraderie, no team chemistry. And that's yeah. sort of what it was like, even with LaMelo and them still there. 
Um, and, and Ubre in his time, it just felt a lot like, you know, we're all here for ourselves kind of deal. And Ubre was just getting shots up. So yeah. uh, I don't know what the market looks like for him, but I know he wants money. And uh, it's, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't mind him. Like, I, I guess like a bench roll would be interesting for him, but yeah. I don't know, is he willing to take that? But I, I think he would exactly, yeah. probably have to be that way because I don't think any other team would be interested in him starting. That's a team that's contending, at least, I should say, because I don't I don't think he brings brought back to Charlotte at this point in time. Yeah, especially I don't think PJ is no, resigned no, yet. So not with the wings they have also too. So yeah, has PJ resigned or is he still just an RFA? Because I know I don't think he's PJ he's Washington. Yeah, uh, yeah. Did he resign or is he still? I open? I don't I don't know off the top of my head. Because I imagine they prioritize him over Ubre. Like if they were would, kind of keeping, yeah. like trying to hold, like have a cap hold for Ubre, I imagine they would use it over or use it for PJ first. But I would expect them to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving on from there, onto the shooting guards. Uh, the shooting guards were the biggest list of free agents, and there are so many dudes on that list that we can t- uh, talk about. But we whittled it down to five. The five we think are the most impactful for one. But two, the, the the ones with experience or with potential. Yeah. Um, we have a one guy on here or two guys on here that are more so potential. One guy that's more so experience, and the other, and all of them have impact. None of yeah. them are going to be like you know, uh, a Udonis Haslam. It's like all of them yeah. can play ten plus minutes a night and yeah. you know be viable. Uh, starting off, we got Austin Rivers. Austin Rivers has been a fantastic role player in this league for so many years. Um, just a very good, like, I get, I mean, sharpshooter, but improved shot creator, high energy, plays hard and aggressive defensively, super high motor. What do you think about Rivers, man? I've heard a lot of stuff about him having a very great IQ, and he's a very smart player. So don't just get it. That's someone else that I've heard that Draymond addressed it, that he would love to have someone like that on his team. He's had many chances, and I think there's a reason why. I think lots of teams would easily find value in someone like that. So I think in the next few, in the next few, I don't, I wouldn't be very surprised. He's going to definitely find his way back into the league easily. 100%. I don't yeah. see him, and I don't see a universe where he doesn't. But he, yeah, like you mentioned, he he plays hard. He does like. Watching him play against, um, <laughs> like he already mentioned, I watched his um his video about when he was playing against Dame and he's praying for him to miss. I was watching that game. He <laughs> was playing so hard. It was just so unfortunate that Dame was just lighting him up that badly. But no, he's a he's a very hard player. So I, I definitely think he'll find his way back. I don't see a universe where he doesn't. Yeah, he's just a great. He's a great bench player. He's one of the best in the league. It's just at what he does. So uh, you know, too. yeah, yeah. Very um he'll get on I, I think if anyone gets on a team it's going to be him I've, every year he's on a team so at some point he's going to end up somewhere but uh moving on from there we got will barton will barton is again he's another hooper's hooper he's very much kind of in that i wouldn't even say lance stevenson but just i would say more so he got traded with him but monte morris where it's like he's just a good scorer yeah it's really what you're gonna get terrence ross he's just a good scorer um had some pretty great years uh some pretty solid years with with denver uh obviously last season ended up with washington uh didn't really go as expected hard to really judge anything that happened there because washington was just a mess is still a mess so uh you know i'm interested to see the market for him he's again to me he feels like a guy who will end up on a contender just to get a little extra punch of scoring off the bench yeah uh what do you think about him? I he, I know defensively he's atrocious at yeah. this time of day. And obviously, I believe it was 20, 2021, 2022 season, the playoffs where it was Jordan Poole against the Nuggets. And Jordan Poole was having his way with Compazzo, Barton, and Monte Morris, where it was just – it was ugly. Yeah. Like you mentioned, he is a interesting scorer. He can shoot very well. He's a very good shot creator at times. Mm-hmm. And just a few years ago, he was one of the top three candidates for six man of the year. So he's yeah. always been a very interesting six man. I, I've never had issues with him. He's a very great six man. And someone, there's a lot of teams I could use someone like that, another scoring punch off the bench. And I, I think he definitely has regressed a bit over the last few years, but I definitely think he'll yeah. also 
his way back into the league. You, you never know when you need someone that can create a shot and also shoot the three pretty well off the bench. Yeah, and especially going to a contender where, again, like a lot of these dudes, your minutes are going to be pretty minimal. So, yes. you know, if a, if Will Barton is, you know, on a team where he's playing 15 minutes, that's his, you know, his value is a whole lot different than if he's just playing five. Yeah. So um, I, I do think if he's on a contender, he's going to be a really good piece for 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 those teams. Uh, moving on from there, we got Javante Green. Uh, Javante Green, one of my, you know, just one of my favorite, he's Lamar Stevens kind of guy. He's one of my favorite players as far as just like, you know, gritty, random kind of just okay. dudes, you know. Yeah. It's like, it's fun to see those guys pop up and just all of a sudden make a name for themselves. Uh, he did that with the Celtics, and that landed him a role with the Bulls. Mm-hmm. And before Alonzo had all the injuries, the Bulls looked fantastic, and Javante Green was one of the you know heads of that monster as far as defense uh, and just yeah. transition play. Um, just a very interesting player. Again, you want guys that take the initiative of doing the little stuff, and he is one of the best in the league at that. Um, the scoring is just an issue, but – uh, again, if if you're looking at him for more than what he does, that's kind of on you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, at this point, is it's like you know, you get him for what he is because yeah. he provides something you don't have. So, um, another dude that should be on a playoff or a contending team this upcoming season. Uh, I don't know what his market looks like. I think he could be a mid-level exception kind of guy. I think he could be a TPE kind of guy, or he could be vet minimum. Yeah. It's just it's it's going to be whatever the hell the market looks like. So uh, I'm interested to see there. You know, what do you think? Yeah, I like your comparison earlier of him to Gary Payton Jr. Or Gary Payton III. He's yeah. a bit of a watered down yeah. version of that, I would say. I think Gary Payton's a little bit – offers a little bit more in different ways. But I, I think that was a great comparison. He's a hustler. He's going to cut. He's going to play nasty defense. He's, he's just going to do the little stuff that you need. And you need guys like that. You really do. A lot yeah. of teams have – I mean, trying to think the last – Three champions have had guys like that. Warriors, Bruce Gary Brown, Bruce GP2. Brown. Yeah, Bucks. Um, they had, no, they didn't have Javon Carter. They had uh, – oh. who, who was it? I mean, you, I guess we could say Drew, but I would even say like Wesley Matthews played pretty yeah. well. He, um, he, yeah. They, yeah. People. And then the, the Lakers, Caruso. Like, yep. You have a lot of guys. You need you need guys like that. Exactly. To hustle, to play, to do the dirty work. You need it. It's, it's a very much – it's a necessity in this league, so – I definitely think someone will take interest in him. I would be, I'm very surprised that he's unsigned too. There's a lot of people that I'm kind of blanking on as of right now and why they're unsigned, but yeah. that's something I think that definitely should have a market for sure. Yeah, for sure. The great player. Um, another dude, I, I, I wish the Warriors took a chance on him. Um, but yeah, especially if they hadn't gone back and traded for Gary uh, last season, yeah. if, if they had not. Great. And then, yeah, yeah, I'd love to have Javante, but Moving on from there, we got Jalen Noel. Jalen Noel, young player, was with the Timberwolves. Um, kind of buried with the Timberwolves. He yeah. still played very well. Uh, the stretch he had uh, last season where, uh, yeah, he had a stretch where someone was hurt and yeah. he was just going off, going off for like a week and a week and a half or something like that. Um, good score, not a horrid playmaker. He's more oh. of a score, but he can – move yeah. the ball if need be um he's six four i think so you know even though i don't think he's a great defender he's someone where he's big enough and long enough to kind of be able to hold his own against other guards yeah um he's an intriguing player he's one of the he's one of the two guys we have on this part of the list where you're more so swinging up with him you're you're hoping to you know kind of strike gold and see if he could turn into something uh, I think there's going to be teams. I would even say there are probably playoff teams that would be like, yeah, we'll take a chance with him on the bench. And, uh, you know, come playoff time, he might be our six man. Yeah. He might look like a Karis Levert kind of dude, you know? So I- I'm really interested there. What do you think about Jalen? Like we mentioned earlier with Will Barton, it's someone very, well, as of right now in his current age, he's a bit younger, obviously, but he's someone yeah. like Will Barton in his younger years where he's going to come off the bench. He's going to create shots. He's going to create instant offense, be a punch off the bench. A lot yeah. of banks need offense nowadays. So I mm. actually think there's a few teams that need him. I, I wouldn't mind. I would like to see him on a team like the Cavaliers, who had a pretty horrid bench last year. And someone like that would be great, I think, for the team to take off pressure off of 
the Mitchells, the Garland, someone else that can score. I, I think a lot of teams yeah. like that need someone like – like I wouldn't even mind to say the Bucks. Someone uh, – just any team that is mainly focused on playing defense. I would say the Knicks, but we all know that it's kind of hard to play for the Knicks offensively with yeah. people there and stuff. <laughs> but yeah. very interesting shot creator. I, I, I like his yeah. game. I think he's a great shot creator. You know what you're getting out of him. Like you said, very capable playmaker. Nothing mm. – Nothing special, very capable. I'm, I'm fond of yeah. him. Yeah, not a problem uh, playmaking, and he's only 24. Again, very, very long way to go. So uh, there are definitely teams that are going to take that, you know, should be trying to take a chance on him. Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned the Cavs. I think the Blazers are a team that should probably look at him. Okay. You know, Anthony Simons is someone that is going to be worth a lot of money, and, like, as it's been made clear, Dame is in a spot where it's like the NBA has even come out and said, Dame is only going to the heat. So at this point, we're pretty much waiting for Miami to make the right offer for him. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, personally, I think Anthony is someone you should probably move off of too, because if you want Scoot to be the guy, Anthony is, I think at this point, like he has priority of the keys of the team over over scoot at this point in, in one another's career but a guy like Jalen he can defer to scoot yeah. I'd rather have you know I, I'd, I'd I'm okay with having a dude uh you know like a, a genuine playmaker who can also get to the rim like scoot and then put side uh, put next to him a scorer yeah you know I see Jalen Noel and I kind of see some Bradley Beal right uh just dude is like yeah I'll, I'll be the score cool yeah and he's you know it honestly kind of reminds me of that that scenario reminds me of the dynamic of John Wall and Beal, like genuinely, they, pretty identical actually. <laughs> um, but you know, I I, I do think Jalen Noel is a great player, uh, a great young player, and I'm interested to see what happens there. So, uh, moving on, last but not least for shooting guards, we got Terrence Davis, our, really? our second uh, swing up kind of guy. Yeah, uh, he obviously kind of made a name for himself in Toronto a few years back, and then uh, you know ended up. Kind of like Fred Van Vliet as an undrafted dude, just, you know, found his way onto a team and got a solid contract. Didn't end up playing too well for Toronto after his uh, first year there and then ended up with the Kings. Uh, I forget his path to there, but he ended up with the Kings and he had some good moments in the playoffs for them. Yeah, uh, Terrence Ross is a quality defender and he's kind of a, a spark scorer. Like you're, he's not a scorer but he's someone that can score. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you got a Terrence Ross and you could potentially have games where he's putting up 15 yeah. and playing great defense, which, you know, we talk about the Lamar Stevens, we talk about the Javante greens, you know, you're never expecting big games from them because they're yeah. not going to have them, but you've got a guy like Terrence Davis that can kind of replicate the, the effort, the hustle, the little things defensively and potentially end up with a few big games throughout the season. So um, I, I think he's another dude that I think a lot of teams are going to look at for their bench. Um, what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, he can shoot. I, I like him just for that aspect. He brings a floor spacing ability. He can shoot. Last year, he shot three to three point eight attempts, and he shot almost thirty seven percent. He's a That's very really strong good. shooter. He yeah. changed his career a bit shooting wise when he went to the Kings, but I know he had a few issues in the past. I believe it was a domestic abuse issue a uh, few years back, so that's why kind of. He's kind of had that, but no, last year he definitely, he lost his minutes a bit and it's not his fault. It was Malik Monk coming into the Kings and taking his minutes. That's what yeah. it was. I definitely think he's a very capable bench player. The year before he averaged 10 on only 17 minutes. So, I mean, it's someone that you have that can score the ball. Like you mentioned very well, he's going to hustle. He's going to play defense and he's only, I believe he's going into his year 26. So he's only 26 years old. Yeah. He's still young. That's still someone to look at. I, yeah. I he's, He's he's a tough player. He's very athletic, can shoot mm. the ball well, and he's just a bench piece. So I I don't see the harm in anyone bringing him in. Very solid. He showed a lot in the playoffs this year too. He showed. Yeah. I, I like. Him. He's very interesting. Just the whole year on the Kings too. He's he's a very interesting player, and I think I'm I'm pretty fond of him. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't know about the domestic situation. That sucks uh, to that see. You know. Back, I believe. Yeah, I was a few years back. But uh, yeah, just as a player, uh, definitely. Definitely some intrigue there. And, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're going to see him somewhere because he is a quality player. Big um, keep your shit together, though. Fucking stop hitting people. Weirdo. <laughs> they got dropped his charges. All right. Well, in 2021. Yeah. Hopefully everything's good in that situation. But yeah. 
Uh, okay. Moving on to the point guards. The final stint of this video. We got the point guards. We only have three here, similar to the centers. There aren't too many point guards left available uh, and aren't too many that are really worth noting. Um, a lot of them are like third string quality guards, which aren't bad to have, but yeah. that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for the top quality guys. Um, and we picked these three, two of which a lot of experience been around for a long time. One of them was a former superstar. You know, one of them uh, was traded for Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> and then uh, one of them came out of nowhere with Miami and, uh, you know, just uh, someone who needs to reestablish himself in this league, but is definitely capable of it. Uh, starting off with uh, the man who was traded for Kawhi, the GOAT, George Hill. Uh, <laughs> George Hill has had some really good seasons with Milwaukee, um, you know, kind of in this stage of his career. Obviously, he had a couple years with the Cavs, uh, Pacers. He's been around. Uh, good playmaker. Can yeah. shoot the ball sort of well. Um, and he, you know... He tries defensively. He's not great, but he tries yeah. defensively. He's not great right. anymore. He was solid at one point. But, um, uh, you know, uh, he's kind of a guy where in a Rudy Gay situation to me, it feels like yeah. I don't really know if he's going to be make, if he's going to be playing a lot uh, or really at all. Um, but he does feel like a Rudy Gay, Tristan Thompson, you know, can provide some leadership off the bench. Um, you know, what do you think about him, at, at least at this point in his career? Yeah, I mean, he's always always been a very solid shooter, like we mentioned. He, I believe, just a few years ago, he led the league in three point percentage in Milwaukee. So, I mean, he's always as someone that you're gonna you're gonna want someone like this. He's he's been from the Jazz, he's been on the Spurs, he's been on the yeah. Pacers in Milwaukee, he's been on winners his whole career. He's been to the Eastern Conference Finals, he's been to the Finals. I think he no, I don't know if he was on the team that won the Finals for the Bucks, but wasn't he? He might have been. I don't. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I know he was on the Cavs when they went to the finals against the Warriors in eighteen. Yeah, and missed, missed the free throw. throw that J.R. Smith. Yeah, <laughs> but I, he's he has some, he's someone with some crazy experience. He's been around the league on many winners. I've always been very fond of him. He always can shoot the ball very well. He's yeah. someone. He's just a great veteran. He, he he's someone that you'll always want on your team. I have no nothing bad to say about George Hill. You're also right. He did not play on the team where uh, Milwaukee won the finals. He was in I, Philly that year. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Okay. In Philly. Cause he was on the thunder and the thunder, I believe might've traded him. Oh, okay. Thunder. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a few years later. That's no, that actually might've been that year. Actually the thunder traded him to Philly. Yeah. I think that was. Okay. Yeah. Interesting player. I'm at, again, at this point in his career, it's kind of hard to say where his value lies, but yeah, um, it's not too much. I would say. Yeah. Next up on the list of point guards, number two out of three, uh, we've got kind of our project slash uh, probably most impactful at this point. Uh, and that's Kendrick Nunn. Kendrick Nunn obviously burst onto the scene with Miami uh, a year or two ago. Uh, tries to kind of, you know, may, you know, kind of find his way. He had some injuries there. Uh, I think Oladipo came in and that kind of hurt it. Kyle Lowry came in, that kind of hurt it. Hero ascended, that kind of hurt. So then he goes to LA and, you know, D'Angelo, there's just a lot of stuff where Kendrick Nunn just didn't get the best opportunities after originally getting hurt in Miami. So, um, it, you know, he's proven to be a good scorer. Uh, lefty, great shot. Just a, a quality, a quality guy. And, you know, at this point, I don't think he's going to be worth all that much. So you're probably going to get him for cheap. Yeah. Um, and he'll, another, again, another bench piece that can, you know, provide a punch. Uh, obviously, he was with Washington after trading, uh, getting traded in the Rui deal uh, at the trade deadline last season. So uh, what do you think about Kendrick Nunn? What does Margaret looks like? He can score. Uh, he's a very solid scorer. He's a very capable playmaker also. He he's always been very solid. I, I've never I never really understood why he's never gotten a better shot. If that makes sense, yeah. I just really feel he's kind of been an afterthought for both of these teams. Maybe the Lakers not so much. I know he had a weird injury there, but for the Heat, I was I know they weren't very fond of him at the end of his tenure on the Heat. Um, yeah. He's always been a very solid scorer. He was second in rookie, no third in rookie of the year, I believe, in 2019, 2019, 2020. I know that he was I believe third. He's he's a bit older, I believe. He went to college for four years. I know he had issues in college, um, 
But he's always, yeah, he's always been a very solid scorer, very capable playmaker. Right. I wouldn't be very surprised if you saw him average 12 and a half, 12 and a half points, four assists, very solid efficiency. Yeah. He's a very solid player. I, I mean, you're getting a good amount of value out of him. And like you mentioned, very cheap deal. It's going to be not a very expensive deal. It's going to be relatively cheap. So it's someone that you're kind of, you're not really risking whatsoever, but you're getting, you could get a very good reward. So I very yeah. personally, I, mean, I think it's very low risk, high, high reward. So interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, Again, still relatively young, kind of in the middle of his physical prime, but obviously because of the injuries, probably not in his physical prime. Um, you know, it it is interesting to say, I don't know what it's going to look like for him because, uh, you know, one of the issues it seems is it's like, you know, another dude who wants the ball more than he probably should have it. Yes. I think you're right about like where he probably will be scoring wise. 10 to 15 points per game, probably around that uh, is where he'll be for his career, which is great for a backup guard. That's exactly. that's quality. Yeah. Um, for six man status and everything. Um, I just don't think there's a team right now that could use a starting point guard and that yeah. one being Kendrick Nunn. I just like I can't think of one that needs a starter, really. Um, so it, it's interesting. Um, but he definitely out of anyone aside from Christian Wood and maybe Ubre probably has the most upside and potential, yeah. like you know, strike away, maybe Jalen Noel. So um, but yeah, last but not least of the, you know, remaining free agents, we've got, uh, an, an old legend in the league, uh, Mr. Dougie himself, John Wall, uh, ob- you know, it, it, you can't really talk about John Wall without making it abundantly clear without injuries. This guy would probably be a hall of famer. Like yeah. he's that, he was that talented of a player in Washington. Uh, people forget in his prime, he was like one of the best, like top four point guards in the league, maybe even top three. Yeah. Um, genuinely just a monster of a player. And the injuries just kicked his ass. And it sucks to see because he seems like a fantastic guy, a great yeah. dude, a great leader, a great teammate. Um, the Houston situation was weird, but yeah. you can't really like it's hard to blame him for that situation. It's hard for, you know, Houston to be blamed there. It was kind of just like a we're just getting rid of James Harden and we kind of need to make this thing happen. So uh, it's, it's awkward, but you know, he, he came back, he had a good little stint at first with Houston and then kind of got the boot while staying there, then goes to the Clippers looks okay. You know, yeah. but it, like we said, the Clippers are just a weird situation uh, for, for any point guard um, because you're not really the guy with the ball. It's going to be Paul George and it's going to be Kawhi. So you, every point guard there looks like kind of an afterthought. Um, Russ kind of had the standout great couple games uh, in the playoffs, but that, or in the regular season, but that's it. Um, I'm very interested to see who's going to take John Wall because he's still a viable player. Yeah. I, even though he should be in that Rudy Gay kind of territory, he's not. I still think yeah. he's a guy that could be your backup point guard and genuinely help. Um, so I don't know if he had any injuries last season. I know he played quite a bit, but I don't know if he had any, any like, you know, if he got hurt at all. Could be wrong, but traded um, to Houston, right? Yeah, yeah. I think he got traded back to Houston. Uh for wasn't it for uh Kenyon Martin Jr. or no? I think I think it was the Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon trade. Yeah, you're right. It might have been because I know the yeah. guy was with Bernard too. Yeah. So yeah. Um I, I am very interested in seeing where John Wall where John yeah. Wall's value is at this point. Uh what do you think about him? Yeah, he's he's always a very capable player. He's still pretty he's still an above average playmaker. He's always going to bring that. His athleticism is obviously dwindled down and it's not what it was once whatsoever, but it's still somewhat there at times. I was watching him a bit in the beginning of the last season on the Clippers. He wasn't like you mentioned, they kind of had him as an afterthought. They wanted to use him more as like an off-ball player at times, more so than him leading the offense at all times, which for someone like John Wall, he kind of needs the ball in his hands to be effective. So mm-hmm. kind of getting rid of his what he's known for and what he's good at. And I, I can't really blame him for that. I kind of feel that way about the L.A. I think point guards kind of go there to die yep. at, at, at some point in their career. But I I definitely think he will find his stride back. Uh, and if not, I have seen stuff about him playing foreign ball maybe. But I don't think it's going to result to that just yet. I, I think a team yeah. will take a chance on him, take a swing. But I don't know what kind of team takes the chance is my thing. I don't know if it's a contender or not. Yeah, I just think it's a situation where he has to come off the bench. Yes. I don't think because 
he's not I don't think he's a viable starter anymore. I think he's a viable player, but I don't think it's yeah. a, as a starting role. So um cuz you know, I'm not going to if I'm Phoenix, I'm not bringing in John Wall and having him start because yeah. I want the ball in other people's hands and that doesn't help John Wall. I want him coming off the bench cuz then sort of like Chris Paul with the Warriors, it's like now you have a guy who can run his own offense yeah. with his own unit and not take away from any. So, you know, John Wall still has a ton of value, um, but uh, it's going to be someone who needs a needs a good backup point guard. And, you know, I don't know where the defense stands with him. He's a high IQ defender. Yeah. And I, if a, with a good bench, he could be a good team defender. Yeah. Um, And he's still very crafty as a finisher. Very like you said, so. the shot creation is still there. He's never been a great three point shooter. So, you're not really worried about that, but he is a good shot creator. And, you know, another dude where it's like, I can see him averaging like 10 and five with a steal a game. And I'm down for that. Like that's, that's quality. And yeah. plus again, another dude with a ton of experience in this league. Um, You know, it's hard to find guys that not only have the experience, but can play, can still yeah. play. So um, that that's going to wrap it up a uh, lot of free agents and, you know, it's just that we wanted to go over that because it, it, a lot of teams need some improvements still. And there are a lot of guys that are worth picking up and worth just knowing about uh, as potential buyouts, uh, just free agents down the line, uh, you know, potential, um, you know, in-season signings and trades for other teams should they sign somewhere. So there's a lot that could go on and, uh, you know, quality players. Um, also, you know, of course, we talked about uh, AD signing the, you know, historic annual contract bad one but it is what it is this is the league now and then marjan bochamp briefly talked about that uh you know we can we talked about it but uh you know best advice is go watch it was fucking fun and it's yeah. something to watch so uh that'll wrap it up episode seven culture cast thank you again dom as always there will be in the moment hoops linked in the description go check them out posting a lot of content uh Still soon going to be doing the Warriors video for him. Uh, so, you know, keep an eye on their channel. Keep an eye here. Follow the social medias below. Leave a like, comment, subscribe uh, if you like the video. So, yeah, have a good uh, rest of your weekend. Thank you for showing up and uh, peace.